This is Carrie. And this is Shira. Welcome to Love Always Self. We were just chatting about some of the <laughs> some of the weirdness that's been going on. And I don't even know if I want to call it weird because it's just, you know, quite frankly, one of those things where I believe, you know, that we all carry these amazing abilities within ourselves. Um, and the funny TikTok Carrie and I were just laughing about, even through some science behind it, which was just awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my God. I, I can't wait to uh, research more on the science behind psychic abilities. Oh my gosh. That was great. And then look on the uh, lady's face. She's like, you know, in the photons and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I was like, what the actual, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> but I was, I was going to say that what I've noticed lately that it's been increasingly stronger where I will have a conversation with somebody about something or I'll have a, um, a thought in my head and, um, or an emotional reaction to something. And then all of a sudden it presents itself very rapidly in my reality, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For instance, the last time you and I uh, were recording, we were talking about uh, having a conversation and interactions with each other and how we can do that in a safer, a safe place. And, and we had talked about, you know, hilariously enough, we had talked about like, you know, picture in your mind that you're around a campfire and um you know but we were like laughing because we we're like don't you know don't light your house on fire but like mm, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah okay so I just noticed that one of my favorite artists posted um a a piece that she did and um in, but, but before I show it before I talk further about this I want to just mention that uh, I was also having a conversation with somebody at work about uh, doing some form of glamping or camping and how he was going to be going to uh, one of those uh, yurts, like mm -hmm. this campgrounds that have these yurts. And I was like, oh, so you're doing like a glamping. And he's like, yeah, so you don't have to take all this stuff with you and all that, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, man, I really want to do this. I uh, uh, this camping where we go to, um, I can't remember what they're called, but they're like, uh, they've got a really cool shape to them and they're in kind of like a dome, but I think I know what you're talking about somewhere right outside of Austin mm -hmm. in like Bastrop ish area. Yeah. Something like that. And then they like, it's got a root, the roof is clear so you can sleep mm -hmm. directly under the stars. So anyway, like Stardome, we Stardome, that's it. <laughs> start them um and so we were we were discussing that and that conversation took place very shortly after uh you know that whole like sitting by the fire and you know calm cool collected conversations so one of my favorite artists literally just posted one of her pieces and it's a couple of ladies sitting around a fire and off in the background you have a tent and you have one of those yurts. And I'm just like, what? You know, cause, I, and especially cause I've been thinking about that, like, oh man, I, you know, I, you know, even though we were talking about it as like metaphorically, right. In our conversation, I've been thinking about that quite a bit lately. Like it's been on my forefront mm -hmm. about, man, that'd be great to just, you know, go use that pit in the backyard and get my friends over and we sit around a fire and you know, whatever. And so I just thought it was interesting to see that. Um, and, uh, you can always check out her artwork. Uh, she's at Tarn Ellis art on Instagram. She's absolutely amazing. Matter of fact, um, the image for our website and mm -hmm. our logo, um, I don't know if you call it a logo, but like the, anyway, the, the image for all of our platforms is a piece from her. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, so I follow her quite closely cause I just love her work. So yeah, I, I just thought that was super interesting. And then to top it all off, I had a little bit of a meltdown. It's been really stressful uh, day job wise and, you know, just a lot of things going on. And I was just like, oh, you know, I just want to like, you know, 
just burn the house down. You know, I don't care. Like, whatever. You know, I'm, of course, just talking shit at that point. But um, ironically in, in enough. In other words, cutting ties with your responsibilities. <laughs> yeah. So just so we're clear, just I'm clarify. not going to do that. Right. But ironically enough, very shortly after I was saying all that, you know, um, my pilot light on my hot water heater went out and I was like, oh my God, no, 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 no universe. I do not want to actually burn my house down. <laughs> please, please don't get super real with me on that one. Okay. <laughs> so, so, and just things like that seem to be really moving forward. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and, and then you start to kind of, you know, question your own ability in creating your reality, uh, you know, and like how strong that can really become, whether it's bad or good. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially with emotion that you have pushed behind it. I mean, that just like, you know, brings it back forward that, you know, what we are focused on is what we are creating in our reality. So you know, I, I know that lately work has been very overwhelming and stressful for you, and that's been kind of pulling 99% of your focus and energy yeah. uh, from your day. And unfortunately, that kind of tells the universe to keep bringing that forward a little bit. So it might be time to do maybe a little releasing ceremony. Um which, you know, talking about fires, I, I did a little releasing ceremony last night. So, um, uh, you know, I sat outside and I had written down a couple of things that, you know, I feel no longer serve me. Um, my, my attachment to the idea that I am lacking in financial, you know, finances, you know, uh, like there's never enough money to go around kind of thing. And, you know, I, I wrote that down. Um, I wrote down, you know, letting go of part of my ego, the jealousy and envy that I experience that, you know, makes or causes me to feel um, uh, less than worthy or not enough. And so I wrote those down. And, um, you know, I probably had like eight or nine things that I, I wrote down. And what I did is, you know, I bought, I bought a cauldron, um, recently. Oh, yay. This little guy, little Look lady, that. you know, um, also got Shira one for her birthday. So happy I birthday love it. to Shira and me. <laughs> <laughs> and I so, was so excited. <laughs> safety first guys. That's why, you know, we got the cauldron. Um, because let's be honest, you know, like if you do it in a bowl, we don't want to ruin our dishes and you know, it, it's just, it's safer to have the fire contained. Um, and so, it's super fun. I mean, look yeah, how cute that thing is. You know? It's like, really cool. Like just <laughs> walking downstairs with it, like <laughs> had my, uh, <laughs> close to Halloween. So it's even more fun. You're like, yay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I had, you know, a bundle of sage that I broke some pieces off and sprinkled in the cauldron. And I had some dried lavender that I also sprinkled in the cauldron. The sage is meant to, um, purify, to, uh, cut ties with any energy around the, uh, emotion around the situation, the expression of, uh, releasing whatever you wrote down. Um, and then the lavender is meant to bring love to the situation and bring light to the situation. So creating some healing, uh, in that release. And so with each statement that I had written down, I read it out loud. And then in my head, I imagined and visualized, you know, where that came from, where, uh, you know, experiencing that and then releasing that feeling and experience. So each statement or thing that I had written down, I took a few moments, like maybe a minute or two with each one to really think about it and process it and to practice visualizing, letting that go out into the ether and saying like, this no longer serves me and I release you. Thank you for the lessons that I have learned in experiencing, um, you know, whatever it is that I was experiencing. And I, this no longer serves me. And then I lit it on fire 
Boom. <laughs> you know, I, I waited till the end. Um, you know, Shira and I had done this previously and we had done it in the fire pit. So we, we got to burn each one individually, but, um, at the end of, you know, reading each of these statements, uh, that I was releasing, that's when I, I lit the whole cauldron on fire and allowed it to burn out. And then I released the ashes back into nature being, um, in a sense of gratitude and also asking for the, um, ash to, rebuild and replenish and give back what is needed in that space to allow for more growth. So oh, that's that was, beautiful. Yeah. That was a little releasing thing that I did last night on my own. And, um, I, I think that, you know, a lot, a lot of people and maybe listeners, you aren't aware uh, of this just yet. And maybe we're bringing this into your awareness, you know, for the first time, but a lot of people will do these releasing ceremonies, um, around the, the new moon and then, um, with intention settings or actually no intention settings for the new moon and releasing for the full moon. Um, but honestly, when you feel the need to release, do it. There's no reason like you don't have to wait for a specific time other than when you know you're ready. Yeah. And I really like, there's something to it about watching the words that you've written down Mm -hmm. just dwindle with that heat right Mm -hmm. um there's that intention setting behind it and you know in my I believe that you know and I and I know that you believe this as well uh Carrie but I believe that whenever you have uh an emotion and a strong emotion behind a thought or words that you say or write down um and you and that emotion is carrying that intention with it that that's uh no matter if you can't see it visibly with your 3d eyes you know it's really it is happening it is occurring Mm -hmm. um and sometimes depending on how much you are connected to it uh that your intention is to release it sometimes you might have to do that repeatedly Mm -hmm. to really release it because somewhere subconsciously you might still be holding on to that right Mm -hmm. there there may still be some healing some growth that needs to occur you know again like the the money thing you know i i've got some memories from you know childhood and i i believe there's some connection to my ancestors as well you know that went through uh, the great depression, you know, those more recent ancestors where, you know, this was kind of the pattern that was developed needing to really, um, be more conscious of, you know, money going out and, you know, needing to save all the ketchup packets and, you know, to go silverware and, you know, stuff like that. So, and it it may require some more in-depth, you know, exploration, of that connection to really be able to get to a point where you fully release it. And that's okay. I remember a part, you know, oh man, I'm, I'm connecting with that, you know, saving the ketchup packets mm-hmm. and the to go silverware. Right. Um, and this thought just occurred to me while you were saying that about, I remember a time when I was going to move and every time I ever moved, you know, back when I was renting, I would, you know, frankly, because of rent always going up here, um, I'd be moving every year, sometimes less Mm -hmm. than a year. And uh, just depending on that situation. And so every time I would try to uh, go through all of my belongings and figure out what is it that I really needed to hold on to and what is it that I wanted to let go of. And And at the times that I was doing that, I wasn't necessarily focusing on the attachments that I had with those items. Um, it was just me trying to declutter my space or, you know, maybe the next place that I was moving to was smaller than the one that I was in or, or whatever. Um, but I, I realize now that there was so many moments where I was like, just without even a whole strong thought towards it, it was me just saying, it's okay. I can throw these types of things away. I don't need them anymore because if I ever need something like this again, I know I'll be able to just easily go get it. So it's even just like a simple thought of like, Oh, okay. Well, you know, target sells, you know, silverware for like 
14 bucks, right? Like I can do that. I can go get silverware if I don't need this silverware. I'm just using this as an example, right? But like, you know, I can throw this away. It's just junk right now. It's been sitting in a drawer for like a year. I don't need this anymore. I haven't even used it in that in time frame, you know, and if I ever do need something like this, I can just easily go get it. And that's me having a focus towards feeling abundant mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. no matter what happens, I'll be able to do this again or have this again. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's funny because, you know, I, I grew up recognizing this from a very young age and my mom used to like tease me about it too. Um, but I, I grew up with a very just in case attitude mm. and, you know, like I should keep this just in case I need it. It's like when I go, you know, go travel and pack my bags, you know, it's, it's, oh, well, do I need 12 dresses for a three day weekend? No, but I'm I may so need it, that. you know, like I'm I'll so take, I'll take three options for this one night, just in case the weather is slightly different, or we decide to go to one restaurant versus another restaurant. Like, oh, I, I don't pack lightly. Um, me either. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like my mom used to tease me all the time that I was going to grow up and marry somebody named Justin Case. <laughs> that did not happen. My husband's name is John. Um, but it, it, it was funny this one time. When it does I ran, have a J. <laughs> yeah, well, I met somebody that was named that one time and I was just like mind blown. No kidding. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Wow. But, you know, it, it just, that highlights to me how programmed I have been since a young age, not saying that my parents, you know, taught me to be that way, but in my DNA, somewhere deep inside of me, that is, you know, something that I've been attached to that I need to save these things because I may need them just in case, you know, like, uh, 20 rolls of toilet paper just in case HTB runs out because that never oh happens, my God. you know, like <laughs> the, the fact that the whole, like so many people were aligned to this one toilet paper, right? I, okay. We and won't just go there. I, I did not hoard the toilet paper. That was just an example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the time we even realized that we needed to get that you know, that there was going to be yeah. a shortage. It was just too it's late and gone. you couldn't <laughs> afford it if you tried. So, <laughs> but yeah, well, anyway. and, you know, an another piece of that too is, you know, I have clothing that's, you know, 20 years old. Granted, it still fits, you know, I still wear it, but there's items that I don't wear. And, you know, I have such a struggle with letting go and, you know, removing that attachment to that physical object. And, you know, it, it's just a, another form of being rooted in the spirit of lack. Hmm. So I acknowledge that source, <laughs> <laughs> but, but wait a minute, what's the difference between like a hobby, like a collection? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Never mind. Okay. John, please do not answer that. <laughs> right. I was like, we're going to go there. Okay. We're going to go there. <laughs> I, you know, and it's interesting because, um, it wasn't until I had a roommate that caught me when we were unpacking. Um, and, uh, and she, I know she listens and, and she'll know, who she, you know who you are, love. And, um, she <laughs> forced me to sit down and go through all of my boxes and, declutter and get rid of a lot of things and mine was mostly I don't know why I'm so bad at mail but mm -hmm. mail is like my kryptonite apparently like I'll get mail I even have a little tiny stack that I've now forced it to be in front of me because otherwise I won't go through it I'll throw it in a corner or in a box or whatever and you know because everything I do I do online so like you know it's just like what I don't need this piece of paper but now I got to actually open it and it doesn't even take that long. Right. Like, but for some reason, but you have to think about like, what do I do with this piece of paper? I, I'm right I'm there with you. <laughs> but I, I realized when doing that, that there was a part of me that didn't want to have everything as organized. I needed to keep one toe in some form of chaos. Mm. 
some form of despair because I connect a lot of the mail to the times of my life where I had financial issues and I was struggling, right? And so it became something where, oh, if I open this, it's going to be another thing that I have to pay for and I have to deal with financially or whatever. So I'm not going to deal with that right now, you know, whatever. And I think, and I don't do that anymore, you know, but back then I did and I didn't want to face those issues and I didn't want to have to deal with it. So I always just kept that one foot in the chaos. And that was me subconsciously doing that by just taking the mail, throwing it into the box. I'll get to it later. Mm-hmm. Instead of just letting it go right then and there or facing it right then and there so I could let it go, which is interesting. I just had another thought too, and I actually was thinking about this the other day, but, and and this was tied to the thoughts of, you know, needing to let go of the attachment of not having enough. Um, But, you know, I I remember planning a trip to Alaska for uh, a friend's wedding and, when we went, like, it's not cheap, right? You know, you know, in your mind, you, you got to set aside, you know, several thousand dollars, you got the flights, those are expensive to Alaska. And then like, if you want to do any excursions, and one of the excursions I really wanted to do was going on a helicopter ride to see the polar bears. And yeah, so when we went, I was so anxious about not having enough money. Or where is that, you know, I had that money available, but it was, you know, in my emergency fund, um, but I had it available. But my fear was, how will I get that recuperated? And it kept me from doing that really cool experience. Oh, wow. And so recognizing that that attachment can cause us to limit ourselves in our experience. And this life is about experiencing life to the fullest. So that is something that I'm working on, you know, again, working on releasing that attachment because I don't want to have those regrets anymore. I don't want to have fear around, will that money come back to me? Because it will. Right. I am abundant. Come on, affirmations. Yay, I am statements. Yeah. <laughs> I am putting my energy, my focus onto money flowing freely to me without any blocks. Come on, universe. Say that one more time for the audience in the back. I just forgot exactly what I said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did you hate it when that happens? Yeah, yeah. Good I thing for rewinds, right? <laughs> any attachment to money and fear of not having enough because money flows freely to me without any blocks. I love that. I'm going to have to write all of that down and just post it on my mirror on a sticky note in my bathroom and say it while I'm brushing my teeth Mm. or think about it while I'm brushing my teeth. I like, you know, I just realized that I need to utilize, um, my mom got me a manifestation jar a few months back, I think Ooh. for my birthday. And um, I need to write some stuff and stick it in there. I like that. A manifestation yeah. jar. That's yeah. a good idea. And I'm then maybe you could do like universe. a you could do like a shuffle, like a peck. What am I what am I gonna try to manifest this week? So you just write a whole bunch of things down, you throw it in a, you throw it in a jar, and it's like a drawing on like manifestation. Yeah. I like that. I like that. And just, uh, putting your focus on that, but I, I'd like to just manifest all the things I put in there. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> ooh, so you could, you could rewrite new things. Cause every time you work with manifestation and it, me and manifestation, we have a, we, we have a little bit of a conversation going because sometimes it comes to you and very unique ways or very unexpected ways. Mm -hmm. So you'll get what you're asking for no matter what, but it's whether or not you perceived it um, and dropping the expectation on how you receive that manifestation is also super, Mm -hmm. super important. Um, I digress. So I like the idea though of you writing a whole bunch of manifestations down, you throw them in a jar, you do a little peck, 
right? Maybe you do more than once a week or you just do once a week, whatever, have fun with it, right? And you pick that up and you're like, yep, that's what's happening. That's what's going to go on, right? This is just set the intention that no matter what you pull out of that jar, that's what's going to occur. Mm -hmm. Um, But then, you know, after your jar is empty, either you write new ones or you fill it back up and you do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. That's a good one. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a really cool exercise, I think. And I actually want to do it with you. So I'm going to have to go figure out my jar situation. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can, it can even be like, like a little jewelry bag, right? Ooh, uh, just like a little, yeah. Yeah. And just, just thinking about it, putting some, uh, putting a little bit of thought into your intention about what you want to manifest don't be afraid to be specific and jot it down, pray on it, meditate on it, and then release any attachments that you have to the outcome. That's a very important step. If we're too attached to the outcome, then we're usually not happy with the manifestation itself. Uh, it comes in a form that can be less desirable. So recognizing that uh, when we're attached to something, releasing that attachment, being okay with however that presents and being grateful. So I know that we speak a lot about being in a place of gratitude, but you know, when we are in that space of gratitude, that really starts to put us in that higher vibrational state. And, you know, it's, it's more heart centered, more love centered. And it's, even, even when it's the smallest things, gratitude has an immense amount of impact on your internal and external environment. So expressing that gratitude and then letting go. And Carrie and I do this um, sometimes when we're in our, you know, if either one of us is having a bad time or a go of it, right? We'll do that every once in a while. You'll ask me like, you know, give me three things that, you know, makes that you're grateful for, mm-hmm. you, no matter how terrible of a state that you're in, find at least one or two to three things that you can say that you're, you're grateful for. I'm grateful that I'm breathing air today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I, I'm grateful for the ability to just communicate and receive love. Even if I don't feel it in that moment, I know it's there. Even if I can't see it or touch it, I still know it's there. And this is true. Mm-hmm. So you can always be grateful for that, right? Yeah. Even if the moment sucks, you know, and it feels horrible or less desirable, I'm grateful for the experience and the learning. Mm-hmm. What did I learn from that? So all those like cool things that you can still find some form of gratitude for. And it helps with those forms of manifestations that you're asking for uh and the universe coming and providing that to you it's like uh finding the silver lining to situations and then letting that silver lining expand yep or sparkle Sparkle. shimmer shimmer (laughs) that sparkles or is it jazzy (laughs) sparkles (laughs) ridiculous Oh, you guys, thank you so much for being here in this moment. Um, we really hope that, you know, you, you try some of these modalities and uh, let us know what you think and what you experience. We would love to hear uh, any manifestation stories yes. um, or anything that you are working to release. Uh, we would love to hear about it. Bring us those manifestation stories. Have a great week ahead, everyone. Thank you so much. And remember, love first, love Love last, last. and love always. (laughs) Bye. Hey, listener. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us in this moment. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, and we look forward to our next connection. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow to stay notified of new content from Love Always Self. 
If you have any questions or topics you'd like for us to discuss, please hit us up on any of our social media platforms linked in the show notes below. I'm Karista. And I'm Shira. And until next time, remember to love first, love last, and love always. Love Always Self Podcast is meant for entertainment purposes only. We do not make any warranties about the completeness, reliability, and accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. Any action you choose to take upon the information in this podcast is strictly done so at your own risk, and we will not be held liable for any losses and damages in connection with the use of our podcast. Any and all medical concerns should be addressed with a licensed healthcare provider, as well as any questions that may be derived from the information discussed in this podcast.